Bitcoin was invented in October 2008. It's now eight years later, and the total amount of Bitcoins out there is now in the billions of US dollars. As you can imagine, a lot of hackers out there have tried to break the Bitcoin protocol to steal money from other users or just to simply become proudly that one guy who proved that the Bitcoin protocol could be hacked. Amazingly, the Bitcoin protocol has withstood the test of time brilliantly and no one seems to have successfully broken the Bitcoin protocol. Nevertheless, just because Bitcoin has not yet been broken does not mean that it will remain safe forever. In fact, there are increasing concerns about the 50% attack. But before getting there, let's discuss another kind of attack on Bitcoin, the double spending attack. Double spending means that uh, I try to spend the same money twice. For example, I use some Bitcoins to buy a pizza. I eat that pizza. And then I try to undo the transactions by which I paid for the pizza and spend the same money for something else again. This was Matej Pavlovich, a PhD candidate of the IC school at EPFL. This can be done, or I can try to do this, uh, by first uh, issuing a transaction to buy the pizza and voting for it and make everybody believe that this is uh, a correct transaction. And then issue another transaction that would spend the same money that I already spent for the pizza and try voting for this new transaction instead of the previous transaction. And if I manage to gather enough votes uh, for, for this new transaction, then the old transaction becomes invalid and the new transaction uh, uh, that, that spends my money again becomes valid and I spent my money twice. To understand the heart of the double spending problem, we need to recall some of the basic workings of the blockchain. I know we discussed it in a previous video, but a TLDR cannot hurt. The Bitcoin is mainly a huge text file that contains all the Bitcoin transactions that ever occurred. Now, this huge text file is called the Bitcoin ledger, and it's made of blocks. A set of transactions that is appended at once is called a block. I can only append the block to some other block in the in the ledger. The trouble is that any miner can add a block to the blockchain. And this means that you're going to have forks in the blockchain, different versions of the blockchain. How do we know which one is the right one? The longest chain of blocks is defined to be the valid one. So transactions that are contained in, in the longest chains of blocks, in, in the longest chain of blocks, are considered valid. Now, to add a block to the blockchain, a miner needs to provide a proof of work. But crucially, this proof of work depends on where the miner wants his block to be added. So if I want to append new transactions, I need to choose where to append them. I need to choose to which block to append my new block for which I computed the proof of work. And all this information is included in my proof of work, which means I can compute, 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 compute and find a solution to a proof of work. But this particular proof of work only allows me to append the transactions to some particular predecessor block. I cannot put it elsewhere. This means uh, this prevents me from just computing ahead a lot of proofs of work and then, and then appending arbitrary transactions at an arbitrary point in the ledger. One proof of work only allows me to do this at the predefined point that I defined before computing the proof of work. This is very important to understand because it means that mining can be thought of as a voting process. More precisely, a miner that is searching for a proof of work that's compatible with a certain last block is basically voting for the blockchain that goes all the way from the first block ever added in the history of the blockchain all the way up to the last book that he's searching a proof of work for. Now let's get back to the double spending attack. So you ordered some pizza and you're giving a Bitcoin transaction to the pizza Yolo that gave you the pizza. Now the pizza Yolo is going to wait for a confirmation of the Bitcoin transaction. Once the pizza Yolo receives confirmation that a block has been added to the blockchain with the transaction that you announced, he gives you the pizza, you eat it and you leave the restaurant. Now, if you were malicious, what you could do is, once you're at home, 
you could try to invalidate the Bitcoin transaction that you've made to the Pizzaiolo. And one way to do so is to ask your minor friends to vote against the last block that was added to the blockchain and that contains the Bitcoin transaction to the Pizza Yolo. And this could be done by voting for the block that came just before this last added block. If you could somehow create your own fork and grow it faster than the main blockchain, then the new fork would become the longer blockchain and it would thus become the official Bitcoin ledger. In particular, the money that you did spend on the pizza to the Pizza Yolo would still be yours and you would be able to spend it for other purposes. You would have successfully double spent your Bitcoins. Now, fortunately, this is prevented exactly through the proof of work. If I could vote without doing any, wor any work, then uh, it might be easy to, to do this. But if I have to work first and then I can vote, then in order to vote for another transaction instead of instead of my previous one, I would have to compute a lot of hashes. I would have to do a lot of work uh, in order to gather more votes for the new transaction. And the Bitcoin system is designed such that this is extremely hard to do, especially if other people already voted for the first transaction. I would or other miners voted for the first transaction, then I would have to gather more votes than the other miners, which in Bitcoin would correspond to more proofs of work, and this is very hard to compute. And this is why, in general, the double spending in Bitcoin is very, very hard to do. Now, all of this only holds if at any point in time there are lots of miners that are working on the longer blockchain so that you and your minor buddies cannot extend your fork faster than they extend theirs. What we assume in the Bitcoin system that not too many of them are cheating. For example, not too many of them are trying to double spend their money. What is more, uh, not, even that, uh, the, not even that too many of them are not cheating, but not too many of them are actively cooperating on this cheating. If small portions of them each tries to cheat individually, it's still fine. But we assume that not too many of them are cooperatively trying to cheat the system. So as long as there's not a majority of miners that cooperatively collude, it seems that the Bitcoin will remain safe. But is that a fair assumption? Well, mining pools can group a huge number of uh, computing power and nowadays the biggest mining pool has a very considerable fraction of all the computing power that is present in the Bitcoin system. Wait, what's a mining pool? A mining pool is a group of miners that cooperate in computing a single proof of work. That means first they agree on what transactions all of them would like to append to the ledger. And then all of them try uh, to find a nonce that would make it possible to append these transactions. Then, if they succeed in appending the transactions to the ledger, they will share the reward that is connected with this block among themselves. So mining pools literally pool miners. And this allows to redistribute more fairly the rewards given to miners, which would otherwise correspond to huge amounts of bitcoins for a single miner. Now, the trouble is that mining pools are getting huge. If this huge mining pool, maybe together with two others, uh, start cooperating on cheating, then only these three leaders of these three mining pools could theoretically control the whole system. In particular, they would have more than 50% of the computational power, and this would open the door to the 50% attack. So the 50% attack has to do exactly with the trust uh, of the system. When somebody controls more than half of the computing power that is involved in Bitcoin, then it gets more than half of the votes uh, for what transactions should be in the system and what transactions should not be in the system. And in particular, double spending attacks would be easy peasy for miners with over 50% of the computational power. Trust could be broken and the Bitcoin could plummet and disappear.
Now, a priori, miners have a lot of Bitcoin, so it's not in their incentives to collude and make the Bitcoin disappear. This should reassure Bitcoin users among you. Nevertheless, it's a bit frightening that mining pools have got so big. Is the redistribution of rewards sufficient to explain the reason why miners have grouped together into huge mining pools? Perhaps not. Maybe there's another reason why miners have grouped themselves in such huge mining pools. Bitcoin is designed such that uh, my reward should be proportional to the computation power I have. The more proof of work I create, the more bitcoins I get. And this should be exactly proportional. According to this principle, there should be no incentives to join huge mining pools. However, this principle could be broken by the selfish mining attack. Selfish mining is a trick that can be played on the bitcoin system where this proportion between the reward and the invested computing power does not hold anymore. In some scenarios, it might be beneficial to me uh, to compute proofs of work, but not tell anybody that I, that I computed them. Like this, I can try to hide what I computed and uh, try to append to this more proofs of work. Large mining pools can then implement more easily selfish mining attacks, thereby miners within the pools are going to gain more bitcoins per unit of computational power than miners outside of the huge mining pools. This is why the Bitcoin protocol as it is today gives incentives to miners to group themselves into huge mining pools. And this is worrisome because it opens the door for 50% attacks, which open the door for double spending. So overall, I would say that the Bitcoin seems reasonably secure but I would not bet my entire fortune, however small it is, on this. Fortunately, research on variants of the Bitcoin is hugely active and there will hopefully be some new ideas to improve the security as well as the efficiency of the Bitcoin protocol. Stay tuned for that. We will have two branches of the blockchain and a race will begin. The first one to achieve the next block of confirmations will win. Some people criticize um, the law of, of energy which is, uh, which is used by all the computers doing the mining to maintain the, the Bitcoin network. Uh, 